Welcome back, my Digi Ds. That's right, we're playing a little bit more of Kerbal Space Program 2 today. And if you find yourself coming back to watch more videos like this, then just feel free to hit that subscribe button and we'll be on our way. Today, we're going to be trying to do another, that's right, orbital fuel farm. I know, I know. Last time, we did build a orbital fuel farm. I mean, not in the last episode, but we have previously tried to make a orbital fuel farm. We got it up. We got it into orbit. It was beautiful. We got a couple of ships docked together. We experienced a lot in trying to figure out how to get that to work <laughs> and get it work properly. As you can see, even now, my campaign name is Work Please, because the issue that I've run into, as you may be familiar, is that the first save file, unfortunately, has been mostly corrupted. I say mostly because I have a little bit of hope still that perhaps in the future it'll just start working. We can go back to it, go back to our original rockets. We had a lot going on in that campaign and it feels a little bit a little bit saddened to kind of lose a lot of that progress. So today we're gonna be making another orbital fuel farm because eventually we wanna go out to the outer solar system of Kerbal. We have been to a majority of these planets. There have been a couple that we still have not visited, although we have not visited even a majority of the moons, even at most of these planets. So we still have a lot more celestial bodies to visit, take a look at their music we want to look at how the terrain looks we want to look at their individual characteristics we want to take a look and see what types of resources that they may have in the future and just in general visit all the moons and planets however we're not going to be able to do that without extra fuel we do tend to have the ability to get to our location however the issue is that whenever we make these plans we want to get the kerbals home <laughs> i i promise you digi-ds the plan is always to try to get the kerbals home I build a big old rocket with lots of parts and lots of TWR and lots of fuel and other ways and maybe some efficient engines and I've even been trying to do hydrogen lately and we can get there. The issue is mostly just trying to get home naturally, right? I mean, we spend most of our fuel trying to get to the location and then trying to get back there is just never enough to even most of the time even leave the gravity field of the planet that we're visiting. And last time, last time was even worse. If you remember Digity's last episode, we managed to, we got there, ran out of fuel, had to EVA our Kerbal and descend with nothing but our RCS pack to get down to the surface. <laughs> no joke, we, we ran out of fuel on the descent trying to get down to the surface and had to jump out in order to land. Luckily, the planet has like... It was like one tenth like Kerbin's gravity. It is it is minuscule to how the gravity is working there. It is very small. So we were able to mostly float down, but we jumped out at still about 100 meters per second and not enough fuel to slow that down. So we had to jump out. And, and surprisingly, I don't know if the Kerbals are supposed to have physics? Question mark? Um, <laughs> I, I don't know if the Kerbals are supposed to have physics because I could have sworn I've seen Kerbals before smack into the surface of anything and just kind of like poof in a literal sense they just go kind of poof but maybe that i'm just maybe i'm i'm misremembering and thinking that was kerbal space program one i know in case b1 they definitely went poof but i thought they still continue that over to case b2 but it seems not really because when we went and landed the kerbin even afterwards we had a little bit of rcs fuel left so we went for you know a little bit of a joyride and we smacked down into the surface and nothing happened we just kind of not even a bounce. You just touch the ground and stop. <laughs> so I was, I was a little uh, thrown back by that. Surprising. But yeah, he, the Kerbal did survive. He's technically still out there on the surface right now, completely alone. Just looking up at the night sky. Quite literally, the night sky. I don't think he's even... I think he's totally locked and he's stuck on the, the dark side of the planet. So yeah, he, he's stuck looking at the night sky. <laughs> Maybe one of these days, if this campaign... Like, that is something that we can do in the future. If this campaign file actually lasts long enough, then perhaps after we visit the last couple of planets, we can make a mission to go back and rescue him from the planet. Like, we we, we need to go back and rescue him. The only issue is, is that a lot of the time these, file, these files that we have for the campaign are completely just getting corrupted. It seems every time I try to load back into them, they are... Either none of the rockets work, they all fall apart, or something of the sort. Even in um, even in the footage in the back here, as you can see, we're building a rocket. I did kind of get a few of the fuel tanks able to merge into one another and put on a small little bit of a thruster. I mean, it's not a small, it's a large, but it's one of the um, slower types of thrusters. But at one point, I, I was building around kind of when I wasn't even recording, and I kept running into issues where the entire rocket 
had no attach points. It seems every single time I attached to something, the whole thing would just actually just fall apart. <laughs> like every single segment would just fall apart. They, they had like no no tension to it. It, it was kind of funny. And honestly, I might even try to go back and find some of that footage to see if I can show some of it. Insert here. I basically, I'm just making work for myself. Like, I don't know if why I'm saying I'll see if I can go back and find the footage. I already know at this point I found the footage. The fact that I've said this made my, made my future self go back to go do this now. Which is in the future. Look, don't. Don't think about it too hard, besides that I have to do all the work. <laughs> so, I, so yeah, it kept falling apart on me, which was funny. But this rocket, you know, I, I kind of want a little bit more simplistic. You know, we, time, we, we tend to do... I mean, I tend to build, like, really big, complicated rockets. You know, lots of different segments. We I typically do a final stage. I mean, I guess most people do. You have a final stage, like your landing stage. And then you typically have, like, your middle stage, which is, like, your travel stage. The one that you are using most of to get in between the planets and then you typically also have your ascent stage you know like what i'm building right now as we're building i'm trying to attach on some of these srbs these solid rocket motors uh, you know or solid rocket boosters in the background i'm trying to attach them on i don't really like the large regular decouplers or the radial decouplers they don't seem to give a whole lot of clearance between the rocket and the subject so if they have a little bit of a bell nozzle at the bottom which you can see with these srbs a little bit they kind of have a outward bell nozzle you know they come out a little bit further from the actual structure of the rocket so you have to be careful that they don't start clipping into one another if they do clip into one another and you try to detach the whole thing just breaks apart <laughs> you know they still haven't quite gotten to that part where they allow uh where they allow a little bit of cracking you know I, I feel like back in ksp1 you had the ability to have a little bit of leniency with the cracking you know with just the game being a little bit broken you know if parts clipped a little bit it wouldn't matter too much you know unless you're trying to decouple all of them but even then they would still kind of like bounce away more than just blow up but uh they you, you, you can only work with only so much and that's kind of why I typically choose to do the ra the larger radial decouplers because the, the larger radial decouplers really just give more clearance from the rocket. So when you do end up decoupling, they typically tend to have a bit of an ejection force. They push the rockets away. Even in real life, you know, if you look at stuff like the Saturn V, if you look at stuff even like um the Falcon Heavy, the Falcon Heavy is a beautiful example, is that when they decouple, they kind of, they almost get pushed away. They're, they're more springs, more as they are an actual force. You know, in some rockets, they actually are explosive bolts. In some rockets, they are a little bit more explosive bolts. Sometimes they have little tiny engines that do push them away, which is kind of what I'm doing here. I'm putting on these, um, I guess they're SRBs or, you know, solid fuel boosters in a sense, but they are decouplers. You know, decoupler boosters. They, as soon as you decouple, these tiny little boosters ignite and push those stages further away from the main body of the rocket. You know, of course, for the very obvious reasons of you don't want it coming back into you to smash the rocket. You want more clearance. So, like, when you're trying to get through that small clearance in general, that you don't clip something and hit a bell nozzle as you're turning. Because often, when you end up getting rid of a lot of these stages, especially in the first ascent stage, you know, in our first one here, as we were about to do our very first launch and see how this works, if it does even work. And, uh, you know what? I may not even have to go back and, I, you know, I probably will have to still go back and find that footage because that's right, this whole rocket did the exact same thing. <laughs> you know, I don't even have to go find the footage. Maybe I'll just, I'll just clip this. <laughs> so <laughs> if you're seeing the same footage again, now you know why. <laughs> yeah, that's right, lazy editing. What? Sue me. You're still watching. So leave a like down below and a comment on how you can do better. <laughs> I'm sorry, DigiDees. I don't mean to give you too much of a harsh time. <laughs> but yeah, so the rocket just falls apart for some reason. A lot of these... In, in that point, at this point though, I feel like it's not even like the file corrupting. I don't know exactly what's the cause. Because it's funny, I remember watching videos from like the real civil engineer. Um, which, funny enough, he doesn't really do a whole lot of engineering besides i guess he does build bridges and stuff in polybridge as i lose a rocket off to the side <laughs> you know I, I should have given up at this point and i lost another rocket i should have given up but i'm like you know what i may as well ride this all the way through and surprisingly it it it's going it's going but i saw some videos from like the the civil engineer where he had a uh, a plane that was like half the length of the entire runway the, the dude had i kid you not probably like 80 different segments of fuel tanks and other reinforcement just in there and somehow the whole rocket stayed together like it bent a lot like the whole plane itself like 
bent around as he's boosting away, but I don't know how he managed to get the whole thing to stay together and the game not crash. I just have a simple couple of rockets attached to the center stage of my rocket here, and I already lost two. Two just slide. They just slide right off. They don't blow up. They're not being decoupled. They're not attached in any other way other than just straight to the fuselage, and they just fall away. <laughs> like, I honestly have no explanation as to what could even be causing this. Like, I, I believe it happened here in a couple of, not even a couple minutes, I, I believe it happens again here in about 10 to 15 seconds. You'll see another one ends up just falling off for no reason. They are not being, again, they're not being staged, they're not being decoupled or nothing of the sort, and they just kind of just fall away. Yep, there they go. There they go. <laughs> just lost three of them, and I'm stuck with just my center core in my side. Surprisingly, Rocket is staying pretty, pretty horizontal. I mean, I do have my, um, my stability control on up, which I thought up would make you go up, like point at the top of your globe, but I'm not exactly sure. And at this point, the whole rocket just disintegrates. It just disintegrates. There's nothing left to it. <laughs> it just fell apart. You know, the only thing out of this that is a little janky, you know, a little bit of a... Uh, the only thing that would be clipping is probably that very first stage, or not the first stage, um, the top stage where I have three fuel tanks all clipped into one another, which I understand, sure, that could maybe cause some issues, but that's not even the part that's, you know, blowing up. You know, at this point, I decided I'm just, I'm going to have to add on some wings. I'm going to have to add some structural reinforcement, you know, throw on a whole bunch of struts. And really, the struts are, they still are king. I think they really need to update a, they really need to update kind of all the connection points in this game. There's no reason, like, I understand that there is a lot of thrust on this rocket in general. You know, they are all, you, you have seven engines essentially all boosting this giant like 400 ton rocket into the sky <laughs> i understand that there are a lot of tensions but they shouldn't be able to just fall apart like that because as soon as you add a whole bunch of you know struts exactly like this it'll it'll stay together it, it'll all work right so it's basically saying that whatever structural reinforcement it has for the rocket in its base game doesn't work that entire this entire rocket being attached by that entire side I think what the issue is is that they're not connecting the rocket on its entire side. Earlier when we saw those parts kind of fly away, it almost seemed as though that they were attached only at like the tip or maybe the the like a small part initially in the middle of where the part is connecting to it instead of the entire side of the fuselage being connected to the other side. I'm not exactly sure what's going on, but just put on a whole bunch of struts and it works, although it is added weight and it looks very ugly. You know, I wish I didn't have to have a rocket that has a whole bunch of weird spider webs on it, you know, and I question the aerodynamics of it, if it even has any. I would hope and believe that they don't have any aerodynamics since they are just, you know, struts there. I mean, in real life they would, they definitely would, but, you know, in the game-wise, I, I think they don't have any aerodynamics to them, so throwing on a whole bunch of seems to work. And look at this, the rocket is sturdy and straight as an arrow almost too straight as an arrow <laughs> although at this point some of you may have realized i am building i mean you already know i'm building a orbital fuel farm but there's one primary design flaw that i have with this entire fuel farm you know all their ships are supposed to be docking here they're all supposed to be landing at it getting fuel up transfer fuel go into the old you know outer stages and there's a couple of problems with that first off we don't have any docking ports. <laughs> no, no joke. I don't know. Maybe some of you have noticed. Some of you may have noticed, but maybe, you know, who are just kind of casually watching the video, not doing too much, you know, just having on the background, you know, background noise, which, hey, shout out. No shame in that. Honestly, I watch so much YouTube in my off time. I swear I always have a video on, but half the time it really is just in the background. And then I just kind of look back every once in a while just to see what's going on. You know, even like even when I was talking about Civil Engineer, or even occasionally every once in a while I'll talk about like Matt Lone. You know, a lot of a lot of good YouTubers, you know, that, that have a decent following. Even like Matt, I like to follow for all the science and rocket updates that he provides. And then Civil, I like watching just because, you know, funny gaming commentary. Uh, <laughs> you know, I uh, 
I hope to be him one day. <laughs> Maybe one day I'll have a thousand subscribers. Who knows? <laughs> In a couple or few or ten years. But, you know, even with content like them that I enjoy watching, a lot of times I will still sometimes just keep it on in the background. It's just, just as noise. And sometimes you look back and forth and just kind of see what's going on in the video and whatnot. It's, it's hard to sit there and be completely zoned in on a video for 30 minutes maybe it's just me maybe i'm a little bit too ADHD, adhd add i don't know honestly i've never gotten diagnosed but it feels pretty apparent i'm not gonna <laughs> i'm not gonna go pay some doctor to diagnose me for any of that but point being is that i find it hard to just kind of sit there and watch a video that entire time unless it's a specific topic right if it's something like a gaming video if i'm watching someone else's peglin or if i'm watching someone else's kerbal um or even like a twitch streamer you know a lot of the time i will keep them on just as background noise it's just you know, it's, it's a game. I like I like watching it every once in a while, but um, sometimes it is just, it's not always that engaging because, you know, it's just, I'd rather be playing it myself, <laughs> honestly. But if it's something more intriguing, like if I were to go to, like, Exerbia, you know, he, like, does his short stories. If I go to, like, Zafrank and he does his educational stuff or, or even something like, um, oh, uh, what's his name? I can't believe I forget it. I'm forgetting it right now. Everyday Astronaut. Um, ooh, I know he has a name. I mean, everyone has a name. Tim Dodd, Tim Dodd, the everyday astronaut, you know, he, I, I watch him specifically sometimes because he typically does educational, like, videos about topics, you know, specific topics, but when it just seems to be a casual game video, you know, ironically, even stuff that I'm making right now, you know, honestly, I, I won't lie, you know, if, if you're out there just kind of casually watching this in the background instead of watching the footage, you know, I, it's kind of what I'm doing in a sense too, right, I'm just doing a voiceover while I'm talking at the footage, I mean, I went and recorded this earlier, and surprisingly, I probably didn't even really need to do a voiceover for this video. It's funny enough, I did do a first recording, which was about an hour and a half to about two hours long. Not gonna lie, it was... It's kind of half of the things that I'm talking about today, about the rocket falling apart and structural stuff. And although we have seen live examples of this happening right in front of us, that hour and a half to two hours that I was just talking about, that was all just issues with the game right so i did do a initial longer recording i did do initially a really long recording then i just i looked at it and i go wow this is terrible and i just deleted it <laughs> i just straight up deleted all that footage i mean i think it's still sitting in the recycling bin i could go find some of that footage if i needed to but it i just deleted all of it I'm like i'm done it, it didn't even work and then about an hour later after that i'm like okay i'll give it another try you know i, I calmed down a bit you know i wasn't really upset or nothing it was just all right well that sucks you know you kind of get disheartened but you know once i kind of amp myself back up again like all right let's go record this video only took about 36 minutes i believe the whole like the the video recording that i'm looking at now before doing the secondary editing is only 36 minutes long so i probably didn't even need to do a voiceover typically what i do for a lot of these when i do voiceovers is because it does end up being about that hour and a half to two hours long that i cut down um and then I try to get that into about a 30 to 45 minute format. But, you know, sometimes, you know, when you're revisiting an idea, like redoing our orbital tank farm here to get ourselves ready for bigger and better traversals of our solar system, that uh, I guess they just went a little bit more smoother. And, of course, after, you know, playing for a couple of hours of trial and error, you kind of find a design that kind of works. <laughs> that kind of works. You know, because we did launch the rocket and we didn't quite reach orbit. We got all the way up. We didn't have enough fuel to really kind of fully orbitize. I mean, the issue that we're running into here is that we're just carrying a lot of weight. I'm trying to make this into a single stage. You know, when we originally did our first orbital field farm, we sent up two different rockets. Part of that was because I wanted to learn how to dock, but we sent up two separate rockets to dock to each other to make a super, like, mega fuel farm. Like, two extra large fuel tanks, I believe they were. But at this point, I was looking at the weights, and I, I even in that hour and a half like footage, I was having a lot of a lot of issues trying to get a extra large fuel tank all the way up. Like so, let me try to do a single stage to orbit type of system. So I just sent up, you know, I got these three fuel tanks, and it's just gonna be like one big one. Because honestly, by the time you get up into orbit and you have gone through most of your ascent stage, you are probably using a little bit of your travel stage. Because you do sometimes end up using some of your travel stage fuel just to orbitize just orbitize so if we can use some of that fuel in and that's already in orbit dock with it we're not going to need a whole lot of fuel it will typically be medium or smaller fuel tanks so they won't necessarily take a whole lot from the farm we would probably have to dock with this thing about about maybe six seven different times before the whole thing be completely empty 
maybe five, depending on the size of the rockets. But yeah, just trying to get this thing up in a single stage was proving a little bit difficult. As we saw, you know, as I was mentioning, we didn't quite reach it with just these side rocket boosters alone. So I added on a whole bunch of SRBs. The medium ones are probably going to be too big. They end up tend to fall off and break the rocket. So I added a whole bunch of smaller ones. And surprisingly, they work really well. I, I, I don't know why I've never tried to use these before, but they're not bad SRBs. Like, they're, they're a lot slimmer. You can add a lot more of them. As you can see, I've managed to fit two per rocket on the side. So each one has their own. And then afterwards, I believe you know, they work well. I mean, they they last longer than you'd think, too. They last almost as long as the main rockets that are going at the moment. But I believe this is the one that, this is kind of the design that ends up getting us most of the way. And you know, DigiDs, I was thinking a little bit while I was at work today, right? You know, a lot of the time, I try to edit a couple of videos per day. But while I'm at work, I, you know, typically only do one one video a day. But as I was sitting there at work, you know, I'm sitting there thinking, I'm just kind of riding around on my equipment. And I was thinking to myself, Digi Digital Ds, Digi Ds is a kind of a weird term for the channel, right? I am Digital Dave, but calling you all Digi Ds means that you are all Digital Daves, right? You are not my Digi Ds. You are not the Digi Ds. You are Digi Ds. By, by subscribing, by watching this video, by commenting down below, by interacting with this at all, you have already become a DigiD. And what is a DigiD? Well, I mean, when we take the name literally, Digital Dave, you are all just essentially Digital Daves. You are all just different forms of Dave. <laughs> I mean, at this point, I, I don't know. I, I was just trying to think with it. I think I accidentally made lore for the channel by making everyone a Digital Dave. But in a sense, I mean... I believe it's been tested before. There have been experiments where companies, of, of course, companies and private institutions have experimented with digitizing the idea of consciousness or something of the sort. And who knows, maybe one day in the future that could be possible. You know, I know that there are other companies also like cryo-freeze your brain so that way you can be thought out in the future. Perhaps that'll work, although I feel like obviously that's just a really big scam to get money. <laughs> I feel like there's a lawsuit there but they won't technically know if it's worked or not until they try it. So that's probably gonna be a long time in the running. <laughs> but yeah, so back to like Digi Deeds is, is a weird term because that would mean that essentially you are all copies of Dave, which in a sense, I guess supposedly makes sense. I mean, what, what would you guys do in the future if you had the option to completely digitize your consciousness into like a robot, you know, almost separating your body. Let's say someone came up with you like, you're old, you're dying, or you're sick, you have a sickness, you know, you can't go on, and you have the availability to upload yourself into a robotic body, but in the, but in the process, ends up killing yourself. How, how would, I wonder, like, would any of you go through with that process, like, oh, back up your mind to a CD, and then just install that into something? Would that necessarily make you any different if it is still you? Now, personally, I think I would do it. Because I'm of the mind that it doesn't really necessarily matter. I mean, a consciousness is a consciousness. So, I mean, if I were to be able to back myself up to a CD and just kind of install myself into a robot, make everyone in the future just like a digital Dave or have the availability for this consciousness to be a digital Dave, I suppose I'd be okay with it. Maybe, I mean, future digital Dave would probably be okay with it. So maybe past Dave should be okay with it. <laughs> you know, thank you for coming down to the channel where we ask the real big questions and also get the real big answers is the, eh, I guess so. <laughs> um, as we can see here, we actually are managing to get this rocket into orbit. We added on a whole bunch of decoupling solid rocket motor boosters, tiny little rockets that just helped separate the stage away from the rocket. We, we were talking about this earlier, if you may remember, so we added on a whole bunch just to make sure that this thing does end up clearing the rocket. We did have an issue, as you may have noticed in the background, that a couple of them did strike the bell nozzles on their way down and destroy part of the rocket. So I had to go back and throw on a couple of them just to make sure that they clear it, especially with those stabilizing wings. Oftentimes, when those stabilizers are kind of like shifting around, they end up catching one of them. As you may find it, a lot of the time when you decouple these, the issue isn't necessarily even that they're so close, but it's also sometimes that you're kind of horizontal. You know, you're not going straight up. You end up kind of running into the ones that are 
essentially on the top side or you know in this case it'd be like on the left side you know you'd be running into those while the other ones on the right would be moving away further so you end up having to throw on a couple of those just make sure you get a little bit more clearance on it and as you can see we are getting some good amount of distance so if you ever want to get a good i guess it's not a fully single stage to orbit if you ever want a good solid fuel tank farm just like this go ahead and just copy my design it's it's frustrating how simple it is there they go there they go not quite so uniform <laughs> but it's it's amazing how simple the design is and how complicated it can be right when you look at something even like uh, a starship or even again the saturn fives or any of the delta rockets or anything or any really any rocket when you look at it it's just a big cylinder right it is just essentially a big cylindrical object that just has an explosion going out the backside it seems so simple but you know even here in kerbal where we are obviously as good as nasa engineers being rocket scientists and moving on and really really progressing the human race here with our gaming <laughs> you know actually i take that back not really i it, okay hear me out so I there was a bit of skepticism in saying that saying that oh it's just a it's just a space game obviously that we're not really changing lives with doing this right however you can probably already assume that there have been lots of people who've gotten into the space industry because of Kerbal I mean you have heard so many stories of people who have even started who are in NASA who are in SpaceX who are working with you know like Firefly and like Blue Origin and stuff like that you know a lot of times what they say is that well, they fell in love with space because of Kerbal, or they play Kerbal all the time. You know, it's it's games like these in general, games in general, that can be the thing that inspires you to do something, right? It, even now, as I'm making YouTube videos, video games, I'm not necessarily changing the world by playing the games, and I'm maybe not even changing the world by making a video about the game. But the games in itself inspired me to be more creative, to make what I am now. You know, I'm not making videos just because I woke up one day and had no interaction with anything. It's just like, I feel like making stuff on the internet. <laughs> you know, it was it was a long build up. So, you know, games are inspirational. A lot of times games are an art form. Sometimes people get into art because of games. People get into space because of games. People get into story writing because of games. They get into game design. That in itself is coding. That is, that is you know networking. That is animation. That is whatever you know forte that you get into for video game making. You know in general, being a developer, it, games are inspirational and they really are changing the world, mostly for the better. Mostly. Mostly. I, I know that there's still kind of that whole, like, mentality of the older generation, quote-unquote, <clears throat> older generation, <laughs> that uh, that they think that video games, of course, are melting our minds and making us all worship the devil and it's the, it's the devil at work and makes you violent. You know, all these violent games like Call of Duty and Halo make you go to places and be mean to other people. <clears throat> that is the best way to put that without being demonetized by YouTube. <laughs> Wait, I'm not even monetized yet. Well, it does have to be reviewed. Okay, okay. I have to assume <laughs> that I don't want to get demonetized. <laughs> but you know, when people go to places and be mean to other people, it's because of video games. But no, it's, you do still have to get past a little bit of that from the older generation, but I believe, I believe culture, since it has really come around, you know, I remember back in, God, you know, the early 2000s, you know, people thought you were a nerd for playing stuff like Halo or Call of Duty. People thought, the biggest thing, the biggest turnaround, people thought you were a super big nerd, a big old geek, if you played Dungeons and Dragons. Ooh, D&D. D&D back in the early 2000s meant that you lived in your basement, you smelt bad, you were covered in Cheetos and Oreos, and honestly, you have never seen the sun. Now, sometimes that is still true. <laughs> let's 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 be real here that there are still some people like that in, in every single genre of everything that has ever existed there is always a group of people who take it way too far that is just a rule that should be said about anything literally any any topic ever there's always gonna be somebody who went too far with it and that is somehow gonna be the precipice for example of it but point being is that nowadays you look at 2023 nowadays People love D and D. Honestly, it was maybe around the 2018, 19. It started kind of becoming. I, I heard a lot more about it around that time. It was kind of still getting more popular before then, but it kind of got a little bit more mainstream around that time where people are talking about it. 
you know, I, I believe it really had something to do with Dimension 20, I think was a big one. A lot of people watched College Humor, which is funny enough, a lot of people watched College Humor and then they started doing D&D &D with Dimension 20. And not only them, we also have um, Critical Role. Critical Role has been doing D&D &D for probably even longer. I mean, honestly, if it had to go to anyone, it probably would have to be to Critical Role. And Critical Role has been doing high production value of their D&D &D sessions for God knows how long. It has been too long. <laughs> so they, in a, in a sense, may have inspired a whole bunch of people to start playing it more. And now even stuff like Viva La Dirt League. I know I'm just dropping a whole bunch of YouTube channels, which, by the way, if at this point, if you find yourself going to go check out any of these other channels, this is may as well be a recommendation video. Because <laughs> even like Viva the Dirt League, they do a lot of video game content, like skits and, you know, and um, funny videos and comedy. Like, mostly skits is like the biggest thing, but they also have an entire D&D series now, too, and that is extremely popular. It's just, it, it's just so funny to see this turnaround that, you know, early 2000s video games and D&D &D and all this other stuff is just so nerdy and geeky and you know unpopular and now you come to today and people are making god knows millions by just streaming games on the internet you know you get somebody like like uh who was it ninja who made his big thing off of just just playing fortnite and even you got people like league of legends and dota and all these other games where people can now make a living and such always just playing games it's it's amazing to see where it's become, and it even got like Tim Dodd, who started up just playing games on YouTube, is now going to go to the moon on a rocket, you know, on a SpaceX rocket. <laughs> you know, so it, it is astonishing where we have come and what video games are even capable of. It, in a sense, has kind of raised the next generation. I don't know if that's for better or for worse probably worse in a lot of aspects but I, I think there's also a lot of good in it i feel like there was a good middle ground where like games were really inspirational nowadays but like i feel like in the past few years games have been very stagnant that's why i've been so amazed to see that dead island 2 released and dead island 2 has been so good you know we've been we've been how do you put it we've been screwed over way too many times lately on just everything on you know all the games on almost every single big title that has released this year has been extremely broken and the only few that i can think of that weren't like that have now been dead island god of war ragnarok i don't know if that was 23 i believe that came out at the end of 22 um but ragnarok was really good i'm trying to think of some other ones i mean i guess phasmophobia no that's let me, let me i'm gonna even pull up my steam while i'm talking here and just take a look do i even have anything because even elite dangerous odyssey was bad Call of Duty is being Call of Duty. Battlefield was bad. Halo had issues. Kerbal's having issues. A lot of these other games I play too are all like indie, small, in development types. So nothing quite of the sort that I can think of that has been this good. Like we, it's just good to see something like Dead Island come out. It's been a breath of fresh air for the series, for the channel, in general. So it's good to see that. But Digities, you may have been able to tell as already as I'm ranting on for God knows far too long. In the background, we did it we got the orbital farm tank in orbit <laughs> at, at first it was just a tank farm but as soon as we launched it it was a it was a projectile but after a while at some point as soon as your periapsis goes above seventy thousand, suddenly you're an orbital tank farm at one point you were international concern now you're everyone's concern <laughs> Now you're the world problem because you you circularized the whole thing a few times a day. I I think that's right. The ISS like rotates Earth something like if you are in low Earth orbit, you you orbit like something like three, four, probably more times a day. You know, it's ridiculous. But it is majestic. Even again, back to the topic of just how inspirational games are. Just look at this. Just look at how beautiful this is. I know it's just a skybox, but to sit here and see Kerbal, this beautiful moon, beautiful stars, the purple, it's amazing. And I really do hope to one day be an inspiration for others i know i'm a small channel just playing some dumb games just doing some dumb voiceover starting out who knows what i'll accomplish but my my goal in itself is i want to work in aviation i want to work um with aviation company i, I was about to name the company but you know i don't want to accidentally dox myself because i know they don't necessarily i mean they do have a lot of locations but yeah you know again i just don't want to put that information out there <laughs> at least not yet not intentionally not until i accidentally do it <laughs> then it's okay but point being is that i i want to go work with a aviation company that is also with aerospace in general and i guess aerospace is the more correct term and i want to work with them 
and uh, one day I hope to accomplish just as much. And DigiDees, if you want to follow me along in this journey, feel free to subscribe. And thanks for watching the video. I'm still not really sure how to end these, so I suppose I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.